They came from all over Azerbaijan, converging on the University Hospital in Baku, the country's capital. Hundreds of children, their faces marred by disfigurements their parents can't afford to correct. When you have the opportunity to go to these countries, you realize how extreme poverty affects these children in that the more important decision is not to get an operation for their cleft lip, the more important decision is how to be fed from day to day. So a lot of the children that arrived came from extremely remote villages uh, where access to basic issues like water and food is limited. Azerbaijan is located just south of Russia on the Caspian Sea, far from Long Island where plastic surgeon Dr. Kaveh Elizade is based. Dr. Elizade traveled to Baku with an organization called Smile Train that helps children around the world suffering from unrepaired clefts. The most recent trip was specifically geared towards cleft lip and cleft palate, so which is really a congenital defect of the lack of uh, full formation of the lip, and which can extend all the way inside. It can involve the palate, which then can also then secondarily affect the speech as well as nutrition if not able to they're not, the kids are not able to eat or speak properly. And also can actually extend all the way out towards the nose as well. In certain parts of the world, uh, that essentially becomes a, a life sentence for them to be completely shunned from the society. And there is definitely a stigma attached to it. Hopeful parents brought in more than 200 children for treatment. Now mind you, this is a uh, country of 8 million people and that actually announced on the television, the national television, that our team would be arriving. And of course, we didn't really have the time or the capacity to be able to handle this group. So I think the, the most heartbreaking part of these trips is having to turn away some of the children. <laughs> Doctors spent two days screening the children. And selecting only those with the greatest need for treatment. As the children would come in, we made a determination based on whether they've had any surgery at all or whether they come from very, very far areas where they're never going to get access again. You sort of make your decision based on what you can you think you can accomplish in a safe environment as much as possible. I know. That's what that I think you would like that. Dr. Elizade and local surgeons performed 25 operations in the 10 days the team spent in Baku. Our mission was very focused and usually that's how we do it because we want to do things that we know we're capable of and we want to make sure that we have success. We don't want to be just coming from another country and doing an operation and causing a setback if there's an infection or wound breakdown or things like that. And repeating the same procedures allows local surgeons to learn surgical techniques. The nice thing about this trip was that we made a connection and I always try to make go on trips where we make a connection with the local physicians so that they hopefully they'll have a better understanding of how to take care of these children and they can also follow up with them. <laughs> In the end, the operations were a success. If you want to see the most um, guaranteed response that's going to make you happy and gratified is you do an operation on a child, and that moment that you hand them back to their mom is the most significant thing because the, the response of the mom just makes it all worthwhile. Dr. Elizade has been participating in humanitarian missions like this one since 1993, traveling to countries like Afghanistan, Kurdistan, and his native Iran. I identify with who I was as a child when I was there and the opportunity to re receive help from other people that came into our country where I grew up. And I realize how fortunate I am now uh, living in this country and being afforded the opportunities that I have now. So I really see it as a, a, a way for myself to be able to go back and help in those countries. And since he became a father just a few months ago, these missions hit home now more than ever. It makes me appreciate again my own life because I have an opportunity to go and see 
a child that was born at the exact same time as my own daughter and the fact that they are not afforded by virtue of where they were born and where they were raised, they're not afforded the same opportunities as my little girl is. And they're no different, it's just that they're in a different place. In addition to his involvement with Smile Train, Dr. Elisa Day and other surgeons with the Long Island Plastic Surgical Group have started a foundation of their own. And what we're doing with that fund is to uh, both provide funding for education as well as research in the field of volunteer medicine and also to recruit younger physicians and surgeons who are interested in doing this kind of work that we've been doing. Wondering how you can help? Just go online. For more information or to donate to the Smile Train, log on to their website at www.smiletrain.org. For more information on the foundation started by doctors at the Long Island Plastic Surgical Group, contact them through their website at www.lipsg.com. So more children like these can get the treatment they so desperately need.